What's up guys, welcome to Visualization. Nestor Adrian Sen here again. Today I'm going to show you how to create a forecast in Power BI. No DAX formulas or functions involved here just by using the analytics feature in Power BI Desktop. So, are you guys ready? Let's get started. For today's tutorial, I have two different points. The first one, we're going to learn about how to create a forecast in Power BI. And finally, guys, as always, I have a really nice case here. We're going to put everything into practice. So now let's jump to the first point. Create a forecast in Power BI. So here I have some theory because I strongly believe that this is really helpful as well. So what is forecasting? Forecasting is a technique that uses historical data as inputs to make informed estimates that are predictive, determining the direction of future trends. So this is really, really helpful. Also, remember guys that businesses utilize forecasting to determine how to allocate their budgets or plan for anticipated expenses for an upcoming period of time. Okay, so that's why this technique forecasting is very, very helpful. Also, to create a forecast in Power BI, we need to add a line chart visual to the report page. All right, so are you guys ready for the case? Let's go to the case now. All right, so the question that we have here is create a premium forecast for PlayStation for the next five years in Power BI Desktop. And here we have also uh, three points as reference, right? Use all historical years to predict the future, Confidence interval should be 95%. Seasonality should be monthly. So please keep this in mind because we will use this data to solve this question. So now let's go to Power BI Desktop. All right, so here we are in Power BI Desktop. I'm gonna share with you guys this uh, report as well. So real quick, before we get started with the case, three tables here, we have a table called DAX measures and we have here measures, of course. We have just one measure here, which is total premium. And we also have another table here called dates. This is basically the calendar table. We also have more columns there. And we also have our fact table here called premium. So this visual here, if you guys are curious about this visual, so this visual is a line chart visual. And also the components here are the measure here, total premium, and also we have dates here, the first column, right, as part of the axis. So please keep that in mind, okay? All right, so now let's solve the question. So our goal here is to predict PlayStation for the next five years, right? So let's do that. All right, so before we do that, let's do something really cool here. So remember, we have the filters pane here. So what we're going to do here is the following. So let's go to premium here and let's look for product climb. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna add this column to the filters here, to filter on this page. Oops. Right, right there, see? Okay, so now we have the option here, right? To select any product. So for this particular case, we need to predict just for PlayStation. So we select just PlayStation. What else? So we can also add here year if we want. Check this out. And this year comes from the calendar table. So let's drag year and then drop here in the filters on this page area. Boom, there you go. So we can go right here, just basic filtering. And we have the options, right? For this particular case, Remember, part of the guidance was use all historical data to predict the future. So we're going to select everything here. But we can also select just a couple of points, right, if we want. Let's say that we want to base the forecast just in the last two years. We can do that as well, right? But minimum, you should have two periods here. But like I said before, we're going to use the whole historical data here. So let's select everything there. So we are good. 
All right, so now we can hide this if we want to have more space. And the next step here is the following. If you guys are curious here, under visualizations, we can see the analytics feature, right? Let's select this one right here and let's see what happens. So we have more options here and let's look for this option called forecast. All right, forecast is there. Next, we need to select add. There you go. So now we're gonna start playing with this data, right? So remember, we care about the next five years. So what we're gonna do here is the following. Let's select years and of course here should be five. What else? Ignore last, we don't touch that. Confidence interval, 95%. We are good there. And then seasonality. If you guys remember, I believe it was 30 here, monthly. And then we can hit apply and let's see what happens. Boom, there you go. So the last data point here was quarter one, right? 2018. And now we see data forecasted up to quarter one, 2023. So this is working guys. So what else can we do here? Check this out. So the line style, because this is a forecast, what we can do here is add this type of line, right? Dash style. Okay, perfect. What else we can do? We can also modify transparency if we want like this. It's up to you. How about 85? It looks better, right? So real quick, we have the options here, drill up or down. So let's use them. See right here, initially we have based on month, right? So we have monthly here. See right here? Now, if we use this option here, this is quarterly, right? We have quarters here. Perfect. And now let's keep playing with this tool. Drill up, boom, and this is year. There you go. That's how it works, my friends. We have right here, one, two, three, four, five years. Okay, so what else? So we can do something really cool here as well. Check this out. Let's hit this option here and then show us table. Boom, there you go. See right here? So the last year was 2018 and we have more periods here. So we have the next five years here. For some reason, we don't have the years here, right? But you know that the next data point here belongs to 2019. And then finally, the last one should belong to 2023, right? So that's how it works, my friends. So if you wanna have this data as reference, right? The forecasted data, you can manually grab this information because we, we can export this uh, forecasted values, sadly. I don't know why, but we can't. But you can keep playing, right? So let's keep playing with this mold right here. See right there? So we see more values here as well. And you can keep playing here. There you go. So this is monthly, right? Now let's back to report. So this is a very useful technique. So remember here, you don't have to worry about DAX formulas or functions here. Just trust the algorithm because Power BI Desktop is doing the job for you. All right, so just to finalize the tutorial here, so you might have a question about the algorithm. Which algorithm does Power BI use for forecasting? Okay, and that's a fair question, okay? So I did some research here, and then Power BI is using the exponential smoothing method to predict these values. This method suppresses noise or unwanted variation that can distort the model while efficiently capturing trends. And remember, we can have seasonal and non-seasonal data as well. And for this particular case, we use seasonal data. All right, so what do you guys think? So now let's go back to our presentation and see what else we have. That was it, guys. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. If so, as always, please give me a thumbs up, share with your friends, and of course, don't forget to subscribe because you don't want to miss anything. 
Thank you guys and see you in my next tutorial.